This is my interlocking crochet tutorial on working in the round. There are other tutorials available if you are new to the interlocking crochet technique. I will not be going over how to do the back and front stitches. I will not be going over how to read the charts or how to read the patterns. I will be focused solely on the in the round problem. Now, is it a problem? Well, it is for me. When I make a piece, if I want to turn it into a pillowcase or a bag and I join it, that means that this edge, which is handy as a flat piece to keep the layers locked together, but it interrupts my repeatable image. This should lock together here. We really don't want to see that line. You know, we have the, the dark and the light and the dark and the light. It's interrupting our repeat. So when we work in the round, we can completely erase, ignore, don't do those locking edges so that our image goes around and around and around and there's no beginning and there's no end. Makes for a nicer bag. One of the tricks you need to know is that it really is easiest to use a repeatable design. One of my designs that has been made to repeat because this one, for example, is tumbling curls and the design repeats here, which means I already have in the written pattern and in the chart, I have already made either color coding on the chart or in the written, it's like an asterisk to tell you which parts to ignore when you're doing in the round. This tubular in the round is not the same as a, a piece that's worked from the center out, although Ravelry lists them both as in the round. So do take note that they don't necessarily mean the same thing, even though the category on Ravelry is the same category. When we are doing interlocking crochet, we need to deal with these tails at certain points. When you're working a flat piece back and forth, whenever you start the main color row, it tells you, are you going to be looking at the wrong side or the right side? And do you need to put your accent color tail to the front or the back? It tells you. When you change to working in the round, that information on the written pattern is useless. It does not apply. If we are going to adjust it from a pattern that is not written for working in the round, but is written for working repeat sections, we can find the information ourselves. So that is either you're going to use the charts or you're going to use the written pattern or you're going to compare them both, but you're going to have to find that information for yourself, which means you need to know what you're doing when it comes to the techniques. We don't want to be worrying about how do I do the technique because we want to be focused on how do I adjust the technique. Let's go back a step and look at the chart. Now I folded over the chart because technically it's a paid pattern and I'm not supposed to be giving it away for free, but we're going to look at the beginning of the chart anyway. If you're not familiar with my charts, some of my old charts don't look like this. The numbers on the bottom and the sides aren't quite as nice. I am going to update those, but for now, if you have a repeatable design that doesn't have these fancy numbers, you're going to have to extrapolate the data, okay? When we read the pattern, we have an imaginary line at the bottom. That's row zero. And that's actually our main color chain. And the reason that row zero doesn't look like this is because when we read this row, what we're actually looking for is what gets covered up. And at the bottom, of course, nothing gets covered up. So that's why the bottom doesn't even exist. So once we get past the foundation, which I will go over in just a second, we need to know that when we're reading a repeatable design, but working in the round, this first stitch, I mean, we're ignoring all this repeated stuff, right? So the first stitch is actually the last stitch. If you're looking at the right side, it's the last stitch. If you're looking at the wrong side, it's the first stitch. That is where you're going to chain three to start every row. So you chain three and you either go this way or you chain three and you go this way, which means that this is always your first stitch. When you're reading from the wrong side, your first stitch is just the first one after the asterisk because this is where it has these stitches, then an asterisk and it tells you then to read these ones. When you're going this direction, the asterisk is over here and you have all your stuff and then you have another asterisk. So the final stitch before the asterisk is your first stitch because it's that chain three. The chain three counts as your first double crochet and the chain space. So we have to either reading the chart or the written pattern, we have to know that when we're looking at the wrong side, we do it as it's there. But when we're looking at the right side, so we're coming from this direction, we actually start with the final stitch over here, 
one stitch here and then we go here for the second, third, fourth, if, but however many stitches it is. That is an important distinction to know when you're changing. I do have it in my little cheat sheet, but that is the explanation of it. It also applies to the accent color. Your first stitch is this one, whether you're going this direction or this direction. The first stitches are here. I still start with the foundation rows. Then you have the chart and you would repeat the whole chart however many times you want to get to the top. But then you would just start from here. So I still start with these foundation rows when I'm working in the round. I'm just ignoring these ones so that it'll fold together nicely. Right now we're going to do these three at the bottom. We have a dark, a light, and a dark, and that's how we see the foundation locked together. The repeatable section in here for tumbling curls is 50 stitches. We could count every single square, or you can look on the written pattern because I have it written out. It says chain multiples of 50 plus blah blah blah. So when you're reading the pattern you change the blah 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 part, but when you're doing here it says chain multiples of 50. That's in here. That's what we're going to do. We chain multiples of 50, we join it together, and then we crochet three. So for the main color foundation I chained 50. If you wanted a bigger bag you could chain 100, 150, 200, whatever the repeats is, the multiples of 50, so you make it as big as you want. I'm just doing one repeat here. And then we want to make sure that this little row is not twisted and we join it to that first chain with a slip stitch. That is the bottom foundation row zero. I just go ahead and do row two as well because it's all at the same time here. So we chain three, that counts as our first double crochet and one chain, and then we skip one chain. So you can see we've entered into that chain there. We're going to use the back bumps, I prefer it, so I'm going to skip one back bump and I'm going to go into this one. Oh, it's a double crochet, better grab my yarn. Double crochet into the back bump, and this trellis is the same sort of concept as when you're doing a flat piece. You're doing a double crochet, chain one, skip one chain, and then double crochet into the next. This trellis is basically the same as a flat piece except for at the end we'll join it together in the round. So go ahead and make your trellis and we will meet at the join. We have our foundation trellis almost finished. We're going to chain one for our final gap. Make sure we're skipping the final one at the bottom. And then to join here, because our double crochet and chain is really a chain three, we have to join it to the second chain, which counts as the top of the double crochet. And it's just a slip stitch. I like to chain three at this point in preparation of the next row because it just feels like I can really tell where the stitch is going to be better. You don't have to chain three now, you can wait till next time if you prefer. So that is the main color foundation. And now we need to do the accent color. And in order to do the accent color, it is the same repeat. It's 50 stitches wide because the repeated part of the chart is the same width. So when you're doing a flat piece, the main color layer is actually one window wider. That's why the edges are always dark. The bottom, the top, all four edges are all dark because the inner layer, the light color, the accent color is one window smaller, top and width. When you're doing in the round, they're the same. So I have chained 50. In order to join it in the round though, I need it to be attached to my project. When I attach it to my project here, if I'm going to think of the inner part of the circle as the wrong side, the outer part of the circle is the right side. And that means that that's where the straight line is going to be. And my accent color foundation trellis, all of the stitches are going to go behind. So all of the white double crochets will be hidden behind this top part of the main color. And in order for my first chain three to be hidden behind here, I have to actually stick my whole project through the window. So we have to make sure we're paying attention. This is where the main color is going to be starting. And when we're doing this project, the accent color 
chain three is always going to be to the left, which means that right where we joined it, this is where we joined it. We're going to pull this right through that window so that we haven't done the chain three yet. So don't worry about that part. But when we do the chain three, it'll be hiding behind this final chain. And then on the right side row, whenever we look at the right side, this main color is always on this side and this accent color is always on this side. So at the beginning of every right side rows, this is how it's going to look. So for this one as well, it has to look like that. So we kind of, I'm gonna make the loop big. I'm just gonna pull it all the way through here. So what we need to do is make this one go all the way around here and it's going to join here. And then my chain three will pop back behind here. So this is probably one of the most confusing part, parts of this. What we're going to do is pull it through that hole and then ignore it for just a minute, okay? This is where we want to make the chain not twisty. I'm ready to join my circle. Okay, I've not twisted my chain. I'm ready to join the circle. I'm going to go right into there with a slip stitch, just like we did with the main color. Now we have our circle, and then we chain three. One, two, three. Now if you're scared that your loop is gonna fall apart, put a stitch marker in. I'm just gonna not let it fall apart. I'm gonna bring it back through that hole. Make sure the loop that you were working with and the string that is going to your yarn ball is now behind this chain and this circle is in front of the trellis. So this is like the weird part that if you're not familiar with interlocking crochet, you're probably giving up right now. And I hope you don't because interlocking crochet is much simpler than this ridiculous foundation. I know the foundation is so weird. Now that our accent color foundation row is stuck in there, we know that this, the bottom is going to be all purple. That's the dark gray. The next one is going to be all accent color, which is this peach. We're not going to repeat these rows. That's why they are grayed out. If we're going to make it taller, we'd start back here at row four. So that's why they're grayed out. The next one, row three here, which corresponds here with row three, is all grayed out so we can see the purple. And because we want to see the purple, all of these accent color stitches are going to be in the back. We're going to hide them behind this purple chain. But before we can start, we need to know whether this first accent color is going to have this main color tail in the window like this or left at the front so that it is not trapped in there. Our very first stitch, we have to know where this one is before we can make the first stitch. And in order to know where to put this one, we have to look at the next row. So right now we're looking at the right side. The first stitch for the main color, row four, that's this one here, these are always the first ones. You can see it. This is the right side of the project. We can always see the right side on the chart. And row four, their first stitch here is front. And it's not front for the whole chart. There will come a point when you have to move it. But most of this design starts with the main color on the right side. And we know this is the right side. So we're gonna keep the right side, we're gonna keep it to the right side before we do our very first stitch. And we know that this is where we joined, then we skip one. So we're gonna use this one right here. Bring it all to the back and do our double crochet. Chain one between every double crochet. Oh, this is kind of in the way, isn't it? Sorry. Yarn over, go through the window skip one stitch grab it here so this if you're familiar with my interlocking crochet patterns this isn't as complicated if you're brand new i'm pretty sure this is overwhelming because it's weird we're not used to doing this sort of thing in crochet now looking at the chart you can see i well i think it's slightly easier at this point just at the beginning we know that this main color tail had to be at the front because of this stitch when we're looking at the written pattern, when we're about to do a right side row using the accent color, in order to figure out where this one goes, 
we have to look at the first stitch in the next main color row. But because the first stitch in the next main color row is actually looking at it from the wrong side, we have to do the opposite of what it says. That's where it's getting a little confusing. So my cheat sheet should help. So when you're working with the accent color and the right side is facing you, you start with your first accent color stitch. It should be already where it belongs because of the previous row. So we knew that this one was a back stitch. Then we have to deal with the main color tail and it has to go in the opposite direction as what the next row first stitch after the asterisk says. I know that's way too many information. It's so, it's very weird. That is probably the hardest part of doing in the round is figuring out where these tails go because you have to look at the next row and reverse it. So we're gonna finish this foundation setup and then I'll show you a few more examples of how we figure out that information. Okay, I've almost finished my accent color foundation where I've put all these back stitches in. The final thing is I have this chain between my two double crochets, but this double crochet is the chain three. So you can either go in the window with a slip stitch or into that second chain, which would be the pretend top of your double crochet slip stitch. And then you don't have to, but I like to chain three just to keep my working yarn kind of more visible, more so that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Maybe you don't get that confused. I get confused too easily. So we have a tiny tube here. We know that this is the right side because we have purple at the bottom, our main color. Then we have all straight line of white and an all straight line of purple. The wrong side has purple at the bottom. Then they kind of jab into each other. And then you don't see the straight line of purple because it's behind there. So that's how we know this is the wrong side is going to be the inside. The right side is on the outside. Now that my foundation setup is complete, I'm going to start with row four. Row four, we're working at the wrong side if you're looking at the written pattern. So I'm just going to turn my work so that I'm looking at this direction. If you are reading from the chart, we starting here, the arrows say wrong side looks this direction. And when you're looking at this side, when you can see the color you're working with, it has to be a back stitch which is why when we look here, we see that our very first stitch, which matches this, is behind this accent color chain. And the next stitch is just going to be this one. So it's also a back stitch. And the next one will be here, it's also a back stitch. And the next one would be a front stitch. So that corresponds to the written. When you look at the written, it says four, main color. So we know we're using our main color. And at the top above that, it has the heading that says wrong side. And then it says accent color to back because when you're working flat piece, that's when the information would be useful. We do not get to use that information when it comes to working in the round. So we're gonna scratch out the accent color to the back part. We're also going to scratch out the first stitches before the asterisk, cause that's this part here. We're not using that part. So we're gonna jump to where it has an asterisk. And the first thing it says is 3B. That's this blue square, blue square, blue square. One, two, three B. And we can do those three back stitches here. This is number one, two would be going into here and then here. But before we can do our first stitch, we need to deal with this accent color yarn. Does the accent color yarn need to be in front or behind our first chain here? We look to row five and because we're doing an odd number row, we look at the odd number squares we can see a blue here. When we can see a blue here, it corresponds to not seeing the stitch that you're working with, which means when you're working this direction, it's a front stitch. So here's a white square to be a front stitch because we're working with blue on five. It's not the same color, so it's a front stitch, which means that this one needs to stay in front. We can look at the written pattern, row five, right after the asterisk says two F. So we know that that's a front stitch. And then once we've dealt with the tail, this working color yarn, we can continue with our first instructions on the main color, which was 3B. So we've got one in the back, two in the back, three in the back. 
Then we have six in the front, so we're going to have to go into in front of the white. We're still going into the double crochet and we're bringing it all to the front. If you're familiar with interlocking crochet, that part's not too complicated. It's really those tails where the working color yarn, figuring it out for ourselves because it's not really in the pattern because we're adjusting the pattern. So I'm just finishing up round four. I've done the final six in the back and then I have the asterisks. So if I was repeating, I could do it again, three B, blah, blah, blah. Now I have to join it. You can either join in the window or you can get the second chain in that chain three spot. Depends how fiddly you want things to be. And then you don't have to start with your chain three. You can just put your stitch marker, but I do like to see it there. It helps me remember. And now we are working on row five. Row five uses the accent color and we're looking at the wrong side. So we're going this direction. We can see that this bottom has those jagged parts. That's the wrong side. And it's relatively easy for working in the wrong side on an accent color row, you just follow the instructions until you get to the end. So that feels easier to me when I get to start and I just get to follow what's in the asterisks. It starts with 2F. This counts as your first front stitch. So the next one is here. One, two. Then we have seven in the back. So we'll go behind here. We're gonna go all the way around following the pattern as written or following the chart if you're a chart person. I'm a written pattern person. I draw the charts, then I turn them into the written, and then I use the written solely when I'm doing crocheting. I just can't translate the pattern into written form or into stitches while also crocheting it. <laughs> it's too hard for me. So I'm almost completed round five. I've done my final double crochet in the chain, but before I can join it, I need to deal with this main color working yarn because if that yarn needs to be trapped in the front, I need to do it before I join. And if it needs to be trapped behind, I need to do it before I join. In order to decide where this main color yarn is going, we need to look at the next main color row. So this, I've just finished row five. So now I look at row six. When we're doing row six, because row six will be working from the right side facing us, and we would start with the last stitch before the second asterisk. So when we're looking at the written pattern, that's where we're going to look. And the last stitch before the written pattern says 2F. And if we're looking this direction, we know that 2F means we keep it to the outside of our circle. If we're just looking at it this way, we have to do the opposite of what it says. We need to keep it in the back because it's asking for a front stitch. So that is a weird place to look. We have to look at the next row, the end of the asterisk section, the final stitch before the last the second asterisk, and then we have to do the opposite of it. That's why it's too many steps and you get to use that cheat sheet to remember how to do them all. If you are looking at the chart, it's basically the same thing because you are finishing row five. You know that this is the stitch that you're trying to figure out. Does this main color tail, is it seen? This is chart is showing you the front side, the right side, so we need to keep it on the right side so that it can be seen next time. And then we join it with our slip stitch and you can chain three if you like and we're ready to move on. When we start row six, we are now going to look at the right side of our project. And because we're looking at the right side of our project, we don't have to deal with the accent color tails until we get to the end. So for now, we're just going to crochet. And when we're looking at the right side, our first stitch is the last stitch in the asterisk section. So we read row six, it starts with some stuff we're ignoring, then the asterisk. Then it has a whole slew of instructions and right before the final asterisk, it says 2F. So I know my first stitch is a front stitch and I'm breaking up that 2F. I'm only using one stitch from that section and then I'm jumping back to the beginning of the asterisk. It says 6F. So I'm going to do this one plus six, which makes it actually seven front stitches here. So I'm working on row six. I followed the whole pattern and then I finished my seven in the back. And the next part says 2F. It's right before the final asterisk. And I only have one stitch left. 
because I used one F here, so I'm really only finishing one F, okay? Just in case we have forgotten that when you get to the end, you're looking at the right side and you're working with your main color, the last stitch of the right before the asterisk was stolen for the beginning. So we only have, these are the two F, but one was done at the beginning and one is at the end. And now before we join it, we have to deal with these accent color working tail. Is it going to be in the front or is it going to be in the back? So we look at row seven using the accent color. And we know that when we're looking at the right side, we have to look at the final stitch in the asterisk section. So row seven, ignoring some stuff, then the asterisk 6B, 2F, 6B, goes right to the end. Right before the asterisk, it says 1B. So we're gonna keep this tail in the back. And we are now going to join it. Now we grab this one. We're ready to do row seven. Row seven, we're using the accent color. That means that we are also looking at the right side. And our first stitch, the one that we've already done, is the stitch that was at the end of the asterisk repeatable section. So right before the final asterisk, it says 1B, and that's what we have here, it's done. But before we can start the row properly at this first asterisk and 6B, the first back stitch goes into here. But before we can do this stitch, we need to know whether this main color tail should be at the front here or locked into the back here. And if we need to lock it into the back, we have to do it now. In order to figure out where this main color tail goes, we have to look at the next main color row. So that will be row eight. And when we're doing row eight, if you're looking at the written pattern, row eight says wrong side. And when you're doing a wrong side, you just do the stitches in between the asterisks. So the first stitch after the asterisk on row eight says 2B. And we have to do the opposite because we are working from the right side and this one's telling us from the wrong side. So if it says B, we're gonna keep it in the front. And then we can keep going with our row seven. Row seven, we did the last stitch of the asterisk and now we're doing the first stitch, which is six B. So we're going to actually have seven back stitches here. If we count this as one, two, three, In order to continue crocheting past row seven, you're going to have to use the cheat sheet along with the actual pattern. Whether you choose to use the written version or the chart is up to you. You can use this cheat sheet, which is a free printable for you, to adjust every row. So you're always going to want to pay attention and maybe you're going to want to highlight it or mark it up to make it however you like. The rest of, this is only page three that I printed, the rest of the tutorial has highlights on it, but I didn't want them to be confusing. So I thought I'd leave this one blank and you can highlight it if you find them helpful. But if it's not helpful, then you don't have them forced upon you, right? So the first thing you're gonna wanna pay attention to is, are you working on a wrong side row or are you looking at a right side facing you row? Because that will, that will matter, you know, whether you're working from which side. You'll also wanna pay attention to whether you're using the main color or are you using the accent color. If you are looking at the wrong side and you're using a main color, you have to do this first. Look at the accent color working yarn. You have to look at the next accent color row and you just move it based on what it is. There's no opposites. It's just the first stitch after the asterisk. Is it front or back? That's where you put it. Then you crochet, join it. If you're looking at an accent color row, then you have to do the opposite of whatever the last stitch before the last asterisk is. So that's, you know, maybe a little bit harder. When you're looking at the right side and a main color, you make sure you're starting with the last stitch before the last asterisk, but you only are going to do that round after you deal with the accent color working round. And you just look at the last stitch do moving your accent color to back or front based on the last stitch no opposites or anything it's just the last stitch and then when you're looking at the right side and you're using the accent color you have to start with the last stitch 
you have to deal with the main color working around by doing the opposite of whatever the first stitch after the asterisk is, then you crochet. So these, that's the cheat sheet. It is not a super short cheat sheet. This cheat sheet allows you to do an in the round project from products that are not currently made for in the round. So I hope it helps. I hope you can try something new and enjoy the process. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and do all those fun things. And I'll just be here crocheting. Bye guys.